Bill Gates was actually on stage rescuing Apple. Rescuing Apple. He did two things. He gave them $150 million, for which he got non-voting stock that expired after a certain number of years. And he promised to keep producing Microsoft Office, the Macintosh version, for, I think, five years. And so he was, he was on stage rescuing Apple. And yet the acolytes who were filling the room uh, had learned to hate him. They treated him as, you know, the, the devil, the Antichrist, and they booed him. But Jobs, with his eye ever on the bottom line, had a different view. There were too many people at Apple and in the Apple ecosystem playing the game of, for Apple to win, Microsoft has to lose. And it was clear that you didn't have to play that game, because Apple wasn't going to beat Microsoft. Apple didn't have to beat Microsoft. Apple had to remember who Apple was. It was just crazy what was happening at that time, and Apple was very weak. And uh, so I called Bill up, and we tried to patch things up. I think he learned to be a better businessman. I think he learned a little more humility. Steve really changed in a number of ways, and he changed primarily because of, of failure. Failure affected him, and he learned from it. Jobs created a brand new product at Apple, the iMac. I think there was a decision to look different. Remember their, their motto immediately after his return was think different. And, you know, he didn't say that because he didn't think, didn't believe it. You know, he really did want to think different, and they would have to appear different to, to show that they were thinking different. The pair <laughs> joked about the relationship between Mac man Jobs and PC man Bill Gates. PC guy is, PC guy is great. I, I like He's got a big heart. <laughs> His mother loves him. His mother loves him. <laughs> PC guy is what makes it all work, actually. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's worth thinking about. The truth about Bill Gates is a brilliant man who you could, and I did, have talked to for long periods about the future. He could think quite intelligently about the future, but the way Microsoft worked as a business was far more incremental than Apple. All the while, they were working on some big leap and Microsoft tended to do the incremental stuff almost all the time. What Steve's done is quite phenomenal. His ability to always come around and figure out where that next bet should be uh, has been phenomenal. You know, Apple literally was failing when Steve went back and uh, reinfused the uh, innovation and risk taking that have uh, been phenomenal. So the industry's benefited immensely. Uh, from his his work, we've both been lucky to be part of it. But uh, you know, I'd say he's contributed as much as anyone. I think he built the first software company before anybody, really in our industry, knew what a software company was, except for these guys, and that was huge. Bill Gates is a brilliant man. He did a lot for the world in technology, and he is now doing a lot for the world in philanthropy. And I think highly of Bill Gates, but. Um, uh, of the two of them, the one that took the bigger risks and changed the game more often, it was Steve. It was Steve Jobs. Well, I'd give a lot to have Steve's taste. Uh, <laughs> he, he has natural, uh, it, uh, not a I joke at all. I, I think in terms of intuitive taste, both for people and products, the way he does things, it, it's just different. Uh, and, you know, I think it's, it's magical. Uh, Despite case, their rivalry, wow. in this joint appearance after you know, Jobs had been diagnosed with cancer, they displayed a healthy respect and even affection for one another. You know, I think of, I think of most things in life as either a Bob Dylan or a Beatles song. But there's that, that one line in that one Beatles song, uh, uh, you and I have memories longer than the road that stretches out ahead. And that's, that's clearly true here. Uh, well, you know what, I think we should end it there. It was one of the uh, highlights of my journalistic career to be there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, we were uh, quite taken aback by the standing ovation and seeing some of the people from where we were sitting on stage actually shedding tears. It sounds strange, but it was actually an emotional thing. 
So I can move this with just a touch anywhere I want. Steve Jobs, now at the peak of his creative genius, was leading Apple to the peak of its creative success. The key to the success of the company was in moving beyond the computer, was in seeing how the microprocessor was, was getting so cheap that it could be applied to other consumer electronic devices. Innovative new products poured in a seemingly endless stream from Apple's development laboratories, pouring a stream of cash into Apple's coffers. 250 million or a billion or however many uh, iPods are out there, you know, are what, are what built the Apple of today, not the Mac. Approaching the age of 50, barely a quarter of a century after making his first million greenbacks, Jobs was worth $2.3 billion. Now, he picked up the pace of Apple's evolution. Computers, they were yesterday's news. He was conquering the world of music. Great new products. Jobs was hurting his competitors. iTunes pretty well killed, killed off, the, off the music store. Um, and um, uh, Virgin Mega Stores, you know, slowly been disappearing around the world. Half a million songs are downloaded on iTunes every day. In many cases, changing artists' lives. Hip-hop group The Black Eyed Peas were asked to star in an iTunes commercial. They later became the most downloaded band on iTunes. But at the time, they didn't understand this new cultural phenomenon. They said, hey, they want to use a Black Eyed Peas song for an iTunes commercial. And I said, well, what's iTunes? And they said, uh, they're not paying much, but they're going to give you guys iPods. What's an iPod? This is the new iPod. But Jobs' influence on the music industry went far beyond simple star making. Way before iTunes, Steve Jobs is been a part of music because every major studio has a Mac computer in it. I mean, the Mac computer is an artist's computer. Musicians are still important, but people like Steve Jobs are uber, uber important. They bought CDs and they want to buy downloads. People don't want to rent their music. Life in Apple's orchard had never been more fruitful. Then, Steve Jobs learned he had cancer. A standing ovation for Apple CEO Steve Jobs as he greeted the public for the first time in more than a year. He carried on working, but the years that followed were a roller coaster of hope and despair. Most poignantly, he was asked what the next few years might hold. The future is long. <laughs> the last few years have reminded me that life is fragile. Um, you know... Finally, he withdrew from public life. Only his closest friends saw how he was coping with the threat of an early death. Steve Jobs loved to take walks. He did a lot of his thinking and his talking with his close friends, like Larry Ellison and a number of other people that he was friendly with in Silicon Valley. And he would go on these long walks, sometimes around Palo Alto, where he lived, and sometimes in other places. It just was his, his preferred method of thinking and daydreaming ideas with people. One day, uh, I, uh, I was out in Silicon Valley. He found out about it, and he conveyed to me that he would like me to come over to his house. And th this was uh, just after his liver transplant, which, as we all know, is a very serious kind of thing that takes a lot of recovery. And he wanted me to come over and just talk about industry gossip, in a way, or events that had gone on since he'd been kind of out of action. He was very frail. We talked about his health and 
He talked about how he felt he was recovering. And in the middle of this, he said, uh, let's go for a walk. <laughs> and I said, really? Really, you're sure you want to go for a walk? We're about halfway to the neighborhood park, and he stops. You know, he wasn't, like, gasping for air or anything, but he was not a well-looking man. And I, I said, Steve, why don't we go back to the house? And he smiled or chuckled, and he said, uh, no, we're not going back to the house. I just need a minute, and then we're going to go on to the park, because that's my goal. I set a goal every day, and my goal now is to get to this park. I said, you're sure? And he said, yeah. So we walked to the park and, you know, he was fine. We talked, by the way, the whole way. We were doing what he does on walks, which is we were talking about different things. And we got to the park and uh, we sat on a bench and we talked about, in the park, uh, as if I remember correctly, we actually talked more about life and health. And, you know, I had had a heart attack some years before and he was lecturing me about that. And, I was sort of lecturing him as well about work-life balance and all these things. And then we got up and walked back and talked some more. And the last thing he said to me was, you know, Walt, you and I have been through lots of adventures over the last 15 years, and we're going to have some more adventures to come. We never did. On October 5th, 2011, Steve Jobs died. The next day, his closest friend and colleague, Steve Wozniak, paid his own tribute. I'm going to miss the chance to go to him and just sit down and share, you know, just person to person. How much fun we had uh, in how much fun we had in those days doing things together. You know, but you, you lose it. You can't ever go back and just just have those those conversations that make us both smile. As the world mourned, the most fitting tribute came from one of Steve Jobs's young fans. 19-year-old Hong Kong-based design student Jonathan Mac Long created an image on his Mac that went viral around the world. There was no real research behind it. I just uh, messed around on my computer and it just happened. Uh, it made sense to incorporate uh, his silhouette, his profile into the logo. It's gotten around um, 200,000 responses on my blog. Some people have said to me that the logo actually made them cry and I thought it was a really strong reaction to have but it, it made sense because you know Steve Jobs had such a big impact on our world. He wasn't just um, a person who made all these great gadgets, he actually changed the way that we communicate. When you grow up you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and you're your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. How amazing is it that we, we live in an era where his legacy will transform people's lives and experiences of, of, of technology um, for, for the foreseeable future. This single individual gave us the original Apple and the Macintosh and Pixar you know, and the iPod, and the iPhone, and the iPad. Uh, I mean, that, that, that is astonishing. Steve Jobs created the most respected brand in the world, um, and, um, you know, shook up a whole industry, and, um, and he did it with a lot of panache and style, um, and, um, uh, and, you know, great respect for him for it. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. The facts are the story of his life, the story of his successes, the story of his achievements, the, the stories of the great things he did for other people continue to go on because 
that's good for our country, it's good for the nation, it's good for the world, and it's also good for the people. Of course, that's what it's all about. I think the world will miss Steve Jobs. He took stuff to a new place, and I do identify with that. It's exciting when you do that, so I do find the excitement of that. And he also made things that were beautiful, great to touch, great to hold, and good to look at, in different colors. The minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing. There's one thing on which everyone agrees. Steve Jobs left a legacy that has changed the world. He had the ability to think out new ways of doing things, not just ways to improve what we have, do a better version of something, but do it in a totally different way that the world would swing towards. And so we fall in love with Steve because he gave us these toys that were not only fun, but really useful. Wow! <laughs> it, it, it's upended industry after industry. It's forced everyone else to follow in his path. And it has touched billions of people. He will be regarded as the person who unlocked the creativity of a, of a whole generation. He's changed the way we look at computers, phones, how we share, interact. He is going to inspire a whole new generation. A five-year-old, 20 years from now, is going to create and design and invent and define a world totally different than the way we see it now. And it's going to be because of Steve Jobs. Even then, he had this ability to bridge a very intellectual world of high technology with something that um, everyone could relate to. Here's a guy who revolutionized the computer industry, the music industry, the motion picture industry, the telephone industry, there's four, and maybe more, I don't know, but certainly those four. And if you compare them with Edison, well, there was the electric power industry, the motion picture industry, and the music industry. Edison had only three. That's impact. To find out more about Steve Jobs and watch the program again online, go to pbs.org. Steve Jobs, One Last Thing is available on DVD. To order, visit shoppbs.org or call us at 1-800-PLAY-PBS.